Hi, I'm John Davis, CTO of Entex Corporation. Here at Entex, we are a full engineering and fabrication company that specializes in fully autonomous, uh, continuous feed systems to serving the extraction industry. We have an in-house engineering team that consists of professional engineers that allows us to design and custom engineer our systems to your specific needs. With our in-house team of professional engineers, we can meet specific customer requirements, both domestic and international. This includes GMP and EU GMP and compliance. We have in-house manufacturing, machining, and fabrication. We specialize in sanitary process systems, and I'm excited to take you through a walkthrough of our Mini 9 extraction system. This is a full cold ethanol extraction process that's from uh, extraction all the way through a distillate final product. Um, it's something we've spent considerable design time on, designing the interface and the functionality to be able to accomplish that full extraction process with no open pores, um, all integrated, uh, closed loop design, and it's something that, um, yeah, let's talk about. So the first thing I want to talk about is some of our uh, design features and the, and the way we fabricate some of the things that we make here. So we, we fabricate everything in-house from the tanks to the frames to the centrifuge, evaporators, wipe films, all this stuff we'll talk about. But the first thing is, of course, the, the solvent holding tanks and the process tanks. These are very unique. Uh, they're designed right here in our facility and fabricated right here in our facility. These are triple jacketed tanks. So right now, this tank is running at uh, negative 80 degrees from the Cascade chiller. You can see from the supply lines, and those are um, insulated in the field. But right now, you can see they have some ice buildup on them. So the unique thing about the tanks is they have a cooling jacket inside, but then they're also insulated and jacketed on the outside. So they're cool to the touch, um, but you don't need any special PPE to inter interface with them. And they also offer good thermal resistance. The other thing on our tanks is we have uh, continuous level measurement and we have temperature measurement integrated into these uh, systems that allow you to look at real-time feedback uh, on, those, on the variables of the system. So tank level, temperature, flow rates, pressures, all that stuff. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is the first part of the extraction cycle, which is extraction. So uh, this uh, uh, part of the cycle, we actually have the inner operator put biomass into the equipment, run the extraction cycle, and take your biomass out of the equipment. That's really the extent of the user interface of the extraction cycle. Everything else is handled by automated routines. As an operator, after the biomass is into the uh, centrifuge, you press extraction start. That runs an automated routine to fill the equipment up with solvent, runs a closed loop extraction cycle, drains the equipment, centrifuges the, the biomass, and finishes up that cycle so you can remove that and put another fresh bag of biomass in. That cycle runs typically about uh, 20 minutes. We design and rate the Mini 9 system for a full 30 minute cycle from start to end. That's a conservative estimate um, on the processing um, uh, feed through of the equipment. So just a couple of things to note on the extraction cycle. We rate this equipment down to negative 80 degrees and that's a really cold condition and that's supported by our cascade chiller. So to reach those temperatures, you have to do a lot of things from the design side uh, to be able to reach those from the, from the components and from the design. So one thing you notice is the centrifuge is designed to uh, be thermally insulated so we can run at those conditions. There's no ice buildup on the equipment. Uh, we're running very cold right now. All the lines coming in are rated for those conditions. The uh, level sensors, the temperature sensors, uh, the ceiling, everything on the extraction side is rated for those temperature conditions, which is, which is challenging. From the extraction cycle, you know, one thing that we do is an, is an automated routine. All of the extraction times, flow rates, temperatures are adjustable to really tune this extraction to your specific needs. The one thing that we do um, as well on the extraction loop is run a post-extraction clean solvent rinse. And what that does is it allows you to introduce a fresh solvent to the system, run that, and re really um, increase your efficiency to the maximum level. After the rinse is done, we centrifuge the biomass dry. We can centrifuge up to over 2,000 Gs of centrifugal, centrifugal force um, and, and really um, optimize how much uh, solvent recovery we're getting out of that biomass. Um, after that process is done, your spent biomass is removed and your new bag of biomass is introduced and the, extraction, and the routine starts all over. And so that's a batch continuous routine using uh, just the batch centrifuge. 
as I'm talking about these other processes that run on this equipment, you know, one thing I want to say is all of these processes run in parallel. So even though we're kind of walking through each um, process in a linear fashion, all of these processes are happening in parallel and the, and the whole operation of the equipment is continuous. So after um, extraction, the, the next thing that runs, of course, is filtering your product from extraction as it goes into the evaporation loop. So we've spent um, considerable time working with leading biosense companies de developing the best filter uh, system for our process. And we have uh, developed and, and used just a fantastic filter set that allows us to uh, really get to a high quality uh, filtered final product before we send it to filtration. We use a dual stage filter system and as we design the equipment, we really design this to be able to be visible as you're running the extraction for that feedback of, of quality. And then the second thing from a standpoint of monitoring fil filter um, uh, condition is, is pressure, of course, your differential pressure across your filters. And so that is uh, monitored uh, real time via pressure uh, transducers that we have on the filter sets too. So both uh, pressure and uh, visual feedback from quality is able to be uh, quantified as you run in the extraction and the filtration cycle. So the, the first sight glass that we have here is the extraction loop. And so this monitors the, really the color and your quality of your extraction. Um, this feedback really is, is with temperature, you're gonna get just a really clean extract. If you run this warm, of course, you're gonna get chlorophyll. The, the color's gonna be very green. Um, as we run, we don't get any, any color on that. It's just, it's just it's a really golden, uh, clean color. Um, moving on, the second sight glass that we have is the particulate filter. So this is the output from the particulate filter that we're looking at in real time, of course, as you're running your filter set coming through. And then we have a final uh, color remediation filter that we run. It's a carbon set, and that allows you to keep really good um, visual feedback on your, on your final uh, uh, filtration before it runs through the evaporation loop. Okay, so the next uh, part of the process is our evaporation uh, module. We designed these systems to be modular, so as you can see, this is a standalone piece of equipment, and it can be configured as such, um, but we implement this into our whole processing Mini 9 system as well. And so the evaporation loop that we use is a uh, combined rising film evaporator, and that starts increasing the quality of your solvent. It comes into our falling film evaporator under vacuum, and you remove the bulk solvent in this piece of equipment. So falling films are really good for, for bulk solvent removal, but they're not good for desolventizing your final product. And so out of the falling film, you typically have a few percent of solvent in your product. And in order to get down to the pass uh, threshold of below 5,000 ppm, at least that's what uh, the requirement is, is here in the United States, you have to desolventize. So in order to prevent the use of rotovaps and other uh, open pores from the falling film, we have a desolventizing system here that allows you to do in-process desolventizing and decarb and really remove a final product uh, without any post-processing. So these systems here um, hold up to 40 liters of product. And the reason we have two of them is so you can run your product into a system over a day's worth of processing and decarb and desolventize as you're filling the next system so you can run continuously. Again, these tanks here are, are vacuum rated tanks. They're triple jacketed tanks so we can run very high temps um, in, the, in the thermal jacket and then also have a cool to the touch outside that doesn't uh, require any special PPE to, to um, uh, operate. They're vacuum rated, like I said, they have agitation and good visibility from uh, sight glasses and uh, are monitored via vacuum gauges as well. So after the desolventizing step is complete on your process, you can either send this on downstream to distillation or you can, this is your first offtake of the system. Uh, so, as you can see right here, we have our first offtake um, option, and this is your, your uh, desolventized, full spectrum crude, decarbed final product. And so that is option number one for offtake. Um, the one thing to note on the system from this point on, everything after desolventizing is a very viscous product if it's at ambient conditions. So. We've taken great care to insulate or to jacket everything from this point on that allows you to just press start on the, on the HMI and pump that product. There's no need for heat guns, heat tape, anything like that that results in major headaches, as you know if you're a processor. 
everything's just uh, kept hot and pumpable and you can just uh, run this with touch button control. Okay, so, so from the following film, you're left with a concentrated crude that has to be desolventized in these desolventizing tanks. The solvent that comes off of this is recondensed. We're, we're removing that solvent under vacuum and low heat, so that solvent is very pure, and that is reused in your, in your uh, extraction loop. So this is where the closed loop solvent extraction process happens, is recovered from evaporation, and it re is reused over in um, the extraction loop. Okay, so this is the next part of our process, is our distillation loop. Uh, this is a, also can be offered as a standalone piece of equipment, and then we also package it here with our Mini-9 system for continuous processing through to a distillate product. Um, one thing to note on this is this gets pumped over from desolventizing, so your product can be uh, directly fed from desolventizing your crude right to the uh, distillate feed tank. Again, this happens under heated lines, uh, jacketed lines that allow you to utilize touch button control and eliminate the need for all of the heat tape and, and heat guns and everything else that is common in, in this industry. So the system, the distillation system starts for, with a jacketed tank. This is uh, thermally jacketed. Again, we use a triple jacketed tanks with an insulated outer uh, shell that allows you to not have to wear specific PPE to actually touch the tank. There's no burn hazards or anything like that. Uh, typically when you run distillation, you run a first pass condition. Uh, the first pass condition is run at a lower vacuum and a lower temperature. Um, this is to remove all of the lights from your, from your process, terpenes and, and um, all of that other stuff. And so those get run through and collected in the, in the really the first cold trap here. We have Walking through the system, we have um, our white film evaporator. We use a six inch still for this um, evaporator system. And we can also offer this in single and dual evaporator versions for continuous feed through from first pass to second pass to a, to a final product. So this system right here is configured for, with one still. And the, how we interface with this for first pass is we feed the product in. Uh, with it, we have a, a feed pump here that feeds the product into your white film evaporator under the temperature and vacuum conditions that are ideal for first pass. This runs through and gets pumped back to the bin feed tank here. And how we typically run first pass is we just run that product, we run this tank, uh, and we remove all of the lights until you stop seeing condensables form in your, in, your, um, in your cold trap over here. And that's how we get feedback on when that first pass condition is complete and ready for second pass. So a couple of things to note on uh, the, the system in general, everything down here is, is kept heated. Um, as you know from a standpoint of running distillation and these vi very viscous products, especially when you go to residue and go to distillate, everything has to be hot or else you're not going to be able to pump it. Everything that we do is, is jacketed. All the buffer tanks here are jacketed and heated. Pumps are jacketed and heated. All of the lines are jacketed and heated. That allows you to have touch button control and run this product through. Uh, without any of these headaches that are, that are common. So the uh, first pass, like I said, runs through the white film, gets pumped back through to the bin feed. That, you run that cycle until your first pass is complete, and then you're ready for your, really your final step, your second pass condition that will generate your distillate final product. So on the HMI, we have touch button control for all of this. It's really just uh, selecting which condition you want to run. That controls vacuum level, that controls temperature, that controls wiper speed, pump speed, all of that stuff. So it's very easy to use, very intuitive, and very functional. So for second pass, uh, again, we run the jacket at a higher temperature, we run the inner condenser at a specific temperature, and we run the vacuum at a, a, much, a much higher vacuum. So we can, do, we can get down to uh, millitor, single digit millitor vacuum levels with this system. Um, as you can see, we have two cold traps. We have a uh, glycol-fed cold trap. This does most of the work in your condensables. And then we have a uh, um, cold trap fed, fed from the Cascade. And this really does a good job of allowing us to pull really deep vacuum and uh, protecting the vacuum systems. We run a, um, a diffusion pump on this to allow us to reach those millitor values. Um, and, and we also run tight vacuum control, which is all uh, controlled via routines. So for that second pass condition, you run through your process. 
and really this is the final step. You, you output your distillate here, um, that's your final product, and then your waste is gonna be residue, which you run through this, uh, this uh, line here. That goes to waste. You're left with a distillate. You can run this continuously. Um, we have good visibility with these buffer tanks here. You can, you can uh, keep these buffer tanks in, in line and really gauge the pump speeds accord accordingly. And then also on the, on the cold trap tanks on the, on the condensable side, you can have good uh, visibility and good uh, control on, on your uh, condensable levels. Um, everything, like I said, is, is controlled via uh, an HMI. So all of the routines are touch button control. Uh, we use uh, high-end TCUs for really precise temperature control. Um, vacuum systems, vacuum controllers that allow you to run everything touch button and hit those values that you're trying to hit from a, from a temperature and vacuum set point standpoint. Thank you for taking the time to learn a little bit about Entex and our technologies. We look forward to hearing from you.